Burger watching Sunbelt football on ESPN Plus. And what a day for football we have here in Troy, Alabama. So much on the line for both these teams. App State can clinch a spot in the championship game two weeks from today with a win, while Troy with an upset victory. The Trojans would become bowl eligible. Hello, everyone. Alongside Ben Stanfield, I am Will Colmeyer. We are so happy to have you on board with us here today. Ben is still a four-team race in that Sun Belt East. Obviously, App State in the sweet spot with only one loss. But Troy, if the Trojans could win today, they could make things really interesting. And oh, by the way, Coastal Carolina and Georgia State both cheering for the Trojans today. Yeah, the best ingredient for a championship uh, contender is a win, right? So Troy, if they could pull the upset today, still very much in the mix going into next weekend. Uh, and so App State, of course, can close it out today as well, trying to earn that conference title. Yep, nothing new for App State there. As for a couple of players to watch, for App State, it's got to be the quarterback, Chase Bryce. He started his career at Clemson, then Duke, and boy, what a year he's had at App State. Yeah, most important guy on the field. He touches the ball every time. He's trying to lead his team to that division title. Averages 245 a game through the air, 17 touchdowns. He's been very effective. If they can avoid turnovers, they usually can win pretty big. And for Troy, the quarterback once again today, Gunnar Watson. Gunnar needs to have a big game today if they want to pull off that upset. It'd be the signature win of his career and the same for his head coach, Chip Lindsey. Trying to put the game into uh, uh, that sixth win column there and Troy relying on his arm. 55 pass attempts last week. He completed 29 for 350 against one of the best in the league, Louisiana. No doubt about that. Well, we'll see what happens. We're ready to go. It's senior day here at Troy, App State. And Troy in the kickoff straight ahead. Welcome back to the vet here in Troy. Senior day, always an emotional day. You see the head coach, Chip Lindsey. There's the AD, Brent Jones. And boy, what a way to send out the seniors, Ben, if they could somehow pull off this one. It would be a big time upset in this series for sure. Uh, and the signature win, I, I would say, for the Chip Lindsey era here at Troy. And, and, and a really just a, a big time shot in the arm for this team. Well, we've got a Chamber of Commerce Day. It is absolutely beautiful out here. 67 degrees, are you kidding me? The week before Thanksgiving, lots of sunshine. No chance of any precip here today. And we're ready for this Sun Belt Eastern Division duel. App State won the coin toss. They deferred. So Troy will get the football first. And so you'll have kicking off for App State is Michael Hughes. Chandler Staten does all the extra points and field goals, and he has missed a kick yet this year. Yeah, he's had a pretty impressive season so far. And away we go, App State and Troy. And a fair catch by Colvin, and so we'll see Troy's Offense coming out, led by quarterback Gunnar Watson. You talked about a week ago, 29 of 55 for 350. A touchdown. He did throw his first interception of the year a season uh, uh, last week, and that led to a, a late touchdown. Yeah, he's had a great season. He was 52% last week. And we're talking about against Louisiana, too, one of the top teams in the league. Troy feels like in any game they go to this year, although they haven't had the most successful season, they feel like they can hang with anybody. I'm interested to see the pace of play for offense. They tend to do a little better when they go fast. Watson, far side, incomplete. He was looking for Demontrez Brown. How about some impact players when Troy has the football? Yeah, how about App State's defense up first? DeMarco Jackson, ESPN says, one of the most versatile players in the country, Will Colmeyer. He had 14 tackles against Marshall at the season best. How about Stephen Jones Jr. back at the corner? He'll make you pay with some interceptions. He had two pick six touchdowns against Arkansas State. The play action and some good pressure applied by number 31, Nick Hampton, and it's incomplete third down. How about Troy on offense? Yeah, how about Tez Johnson? Not just a wideout, he's a rushing threat as well. Had that 31-yard rushing touchdown against South Alabama. And then Kamani Vidal, 641 yards on the year, five touchdowns. If he finds a gap, that dude is gone. They're going to need him to find a few gaps against this App State defense. Third down and 10. The Trojans do not want a three and out. Plenty of time for Watson, and he 
Gets the pass completion and a first down to Kimani Vidal. Vidal had a reception last week. He now has 16 on the year for just over 100 yards. That first down is a total credit to the offensive line there, the guys in front that held the pocket long enough to get it done. On first down, they'll try the left side. Vidal gets little to nothing on that one. That App State defense is uh, pretty salty. You've got, uh, they're giving up 21.7 points per game. That's third best in the conference. Third best in rushing yards given up. Fourth in total defense. And they showed Troy why they went to the air first three plays of the game, yes. too, on that play also. Watson in trouble, scrambling, and will just unload one. There is a flag. He was looking for Barber, Jabri Barber. It's incomplete, but we'll see what the flag is. Flag is deep in the secondary, too. There was an App State player that hit the turf as that flag came out. Out of the pass, holding defense number six. 10 yard penalty, automatic first down. That's going to be on Steven Jones. With seven career interceptions, but he got busted on that one. Well, I tell you, one of the keys for Troy on this drive, if you get any kind of points and you're in great shape out of the gate. Uh, App State, not necessarily a high scoring team, uh, but you do have to uh, be pretty efficient on your trips down the field with the ball and put the ball in the end zone. Might be a free play. Looked like uh, App State might have jumped off sides on that far side. Fidel gets near midfield. Yeah, he popped right into the neutral zone there, it looked like. But this team's not going to give you much, though. Uh, not much success all running side. the ball Defense, against number them. 15, five-yard penalty, repeat first down. So you got to take all the breaks you can get. You see him right there at the top left of your screen. Troy coming with a hard snap count, and it, it paid off that time. Troy averaging just under 26 points per game. They'd like to have an opening drive like they did a week ago against Louisiana. A touchdown on the opening drive. This one intended for Tez Johnson, the first target of the day to Tez. It's incomplete. Number 13 was on the coverage. That was Caden Smith. Boy, you get a little anxiety on that Troy sideline when that ball pops through his hands like that. That was primed for an interception. Fortunately for the home team, nobody there. It was a tip that forced the uh, interception the first of the year last week uh, on Watson. Here's Vidal, and he breaks free. Makes a man miss, and Vidal all the way inside the red zone. A big-time pickup for Kimani Vidal. Had only 21 yards rushing last week on 11 carries. He, he got at least that down there. Fumbled the ball, though, and App State comes up with the recovery. It's a fumble recovered by the defense. First down. So that is huge. That was the gap I was talking about that he needs to get a big time run. But then the ball came out. Was it stripped? Let's see what happened there at the end of that run. It's going to go upstairs. But the question is, was he down before the ball comes out? A little bit of a darker look there with the shadows of the stadium. We'll take an, another glance at it. They're going to look, send this over to the review booth, too. Marty Abazizan was uh, the replay official. Enjoyed visiting with Marty before we went on the air today. Yeah, Marty came over and uh, very kind, gracious with his time, talking with us about a, a couple of things. Let's see this look. Ground level. That one's tough to see. It looks like he was potentially down, though. That left knee, I think, is what's going to bail him out here. Yeah, there you go. Because that's why, I mean, I initially I had him down, and that's why I will continue to talk about Fidel, what he did a week ago, because I thought he was down, and then. Yeah, the, the ball, is, when the 
when he went down, or was right there at the turf at least, uh, the ball popped out, and the officials did rule on the field that it was a fumble recovered by App State. Trey Cobb right there, number seven, was the Mountaineer that forced the fumble. But you're right, though. It looked like the play was done. So, of course, instinctively, we go to the charts and start looking at what's That's coming right. up next. Exactly. <laughs> so that happens. And we do know that Vidal, that was a 36-yard carry for Vidal. That'll put him near 700 yards on the season on the ground. That uh, outdoes his game total from last Saturday, too. That's the review. Moving on the field stands. First down, that's State. Wow. App State gets the call, so the ruling stands. So it will be App State football. That's a tough break for Chip Lindsey and company. It was an interesting look. Here's another shot of it. If he was going to be down, it was that left knee that was going to that was going to prime him up there. But I, the ball must had to have been coming out before that. Mm. Tough break for the Trojans and give that guy Cobb Trey Cobb a big force fumble right there, his first of the year. Yeah, that was huge for the road team. So here's Chase Bryce out of Grayson High School there in Georgia. Started his career at Clemson, then Duke. And all he's done here this year at App State is second in the Sun Belt Conference, 245 and a half yards per game passing. Last week, 14 of 26, 54%, threw for 195, a couple touchdowns. He did have a couple picks, though. And they'll keep it on the ground on first down, and they've got two terrific tailbacks, including that guy, Nate Noel. He leads the Sunbelt Conference in rushing just over 91 yards a game. How about some impact players? Yeah, let's talk about Noel. And, uh, you know, against Marshall this year, he ran for 187. He leads the league, like we mentioned, 10 yards or more on a carry. How about Cameron Peoples against Marshall? Also 25 carries, three touchdowns in that game. He had two against Coastal and ULM and a touchdown against Arkansas State. 18 touchdowns in the last nine games. He's the real deal. Yeah, they're both absolutely terrific. Bryce is going to go up top. He's got a man wide open. That is Corey Sutton. And Sutton takes it all the way down to the 32-yard line. That was Dale Pettis, number 31, making the tackle. He had seven tackles a week ago. One of those was for a loss, but big-time play here by the Mountaineers. Yeah, that's what they do. When people think of App State, they think of running the football a lot, but then they, man, they will pick you apart in the middle of the field like that on some pretty uh, hefty pass plays. That was for 35 yards, Bryce to Sutton. Now first down and 10 at the 31. The handoff and breaking free and another first down for Nate Noel. Noel needs 89 yards to get 1,000 on the year, and if he does that, there'll be 10 straight years that App State has had a 1,000-yard rusher. And it's important to remember, as easy as this drive is looking for App State, that Troy's one of the best defenses in the Sun Belt Conference, if not the country, in some statistical categories. So what an impressive start for the Mountaineers. Yeah, first overall, Troy is in total defense, allowing just 322 a game, number one in the Sun Belt in rushing defense as well. Inside the red zone for the first time. This is Virgil, Jalen Virgil, who had a touchdown reception the last time these two squared off here in Troy. Nice job by the Trojan defense there. Before this trip to the red zone, they'd been in the, inside the 20 38 times this year. They come away with points on 35 trips. They're very efficient inside the 20. We see what happens on trip number 39 inside the 20-yard line as well. I, I got to tell you, the way they're running the ball right now, that's all I would do. Yeah. yeah, when you got the top two rushers in the Sun Belt, you've got an absolutely terrific offensive line. I mean, App State loves their offensive line. There's a lot to love. And here, a little play action. Throwing toward the end zone, Bryce. It's incomplete. Had some pressure. That was Jubinor. First time we, nope, I beg your pardon, that was T.J. Harris applying the pressure, number eight. Well, that play just kind of fell apart <laughs> as it developed. We'll take another look at it here. The play action comes, Detroit gets a little pressure in the backfield and just able to throw it away. Smart play by Bryce there. 
Harris tied for second on Troy in tackles. That was a big quarterback hurry right there. So third down and eight. Troy will try to force a field goal attempt. Bouncing outside is Noel. And Noel will be shy of a first down. Oh, Solomon yeah. was there, as was Looks like a Jordan Anthony, number 15 as well. They had several, Solomon and Anthony, both there on that play. Now it sets up fourth down and two. Looks like they're going for it too on this fourth down and two. App State 14 of 22 on fourth down this year, 64%. So basically two out of every three times they go for it on fourth down, they get it. Let's see what they'll do here, fourth down and two on the ground. First time we've mentioned number six, Cameron Peoples name, and he will get the first down, I believe. It was close. Yeah, one of the things you look for in that situation is the push up front, and I, I felt like that App State offensive line got the better of Troy's defensive front there to keep this drive alive. So there you go. This is, like we said, their 39th trip to the red zone this year. They're super efficient, and it keeps the drive alive in four-down territory. Of course, with Chandler Staten kicking, you knew that they were going to have at least three. The guy hasn't missed a field goal or an extra point all season long. In trouble, but Bryce gets away, and the throw to the far side, it's incomplete. He was looking for one of the backup tight ends, Miller Gibbs. Henry Pearson, the starter, uh, not making the trip, still dealing with uh, a death in his family a couple weeks ago. Our thoughts and prayers go out to Henry and his family. Yeah, absolutely. Sending our uh, our condolences and prayers uh, to him and, and his relatives this, this weekend. Second down and goal. Bryce can also run. He had four carries for 17 yards and a touchdown last week. That was in that 31-7 win against South Alabama. They'll keep it on the ground and getting close to the end zone, down near the two-yard line. That was Peoples out of Lineville, Alabama, the junior, Clay Central High School. There is a flag. Well, I think that was Cholo that came up on the tackle there, and what a masterful job he did of saving that run from being a touchdown. Marshall Lewis is our referee today. Holding offense, number 75, 10-yard penalty, with eight second down. Boy, that's a big penalty on this drive here. Damian Daly got busted. And the thing is, with this defense, oh, yeah. you, you can't afford penalties like that to back you up in the red zone because that, that energizes this Troy defense. And, and these guys are nasty, man. They have a reputation around this league for being some big time playmakers. I wouldn't be surprised if uh, defensive coordinator Brandon Hall draws up some pretty heavy uh, backfield blitz here. And if He's you notice too, uh, App State likes to run somewhat of a tight set. They don't go very wide across the field. They keep their receivers somewhat close. Whistle on the field. Was a timeout taken? It looks like there is a timeout on the field. First charge timeout. Sure. I'll take a timeout as well. App State is driving. Nine minutes left here in the first quarter. Two App State leads the all-time series 12 to nine, including the last meeting a year ago in Boone. 47 to 10. They also were impressive a couple years ago. Last game here at Troy as well. That was and our, right now App State's driving. Our first game together. That's Will right. Colmar, it sure was. Two years ago. Saturday after Thanksgiving. Tenth play of this drive for the Mountaineers. Second down and goal at the 15. We've played six minutes so far. Will Colmeyer, Ben Stanfield, the rest of our ESPN crew. Glad you're on board with us here today. And here's our first catch of the day by Hennigan, Thomas Hennigan, who has the FBS record for now 62 starts in his career. 
That was Zion Williams making the stop. Yeah, two years ago we saw him. He showed out Ooh. here in, in this very stadium. Had a career best 11 catches that day for 140 yards. Second team academic All-American last year. That's Thomas Hennigan, number five. Also Malik Williams, number 14. Corey Sutton, he's already got a big catch today, number two. Those are the three favorite targets for Bryce. Third and goal at the 12. On the ground to Peoples. Breaks one tackle that will get nowhere near the goal line. That was a nice stop by Will Cholo. Had a couple tackles last week, now with 31 on the year. Yeah, that was a big time stop there. Looked like Kyle Nixon jumped in there uh, to help out on that tackle as well. That was a nice stop for this Troy defense. And they really they, they tried to get some pressure through. They were able to keep App State going east and west as opposed to north and south inside the red zone. Chandler Staten hasn't missed a field goal all season long. Make it now 16 for 16 in field goals. He's made all four to two of his extra points. You can see why he is a Lou Groza semifinalist. We've got the kickoff coming up. App State has scored first. We welcome you back to Troy, Alabama. A lot on the line, including for App State. They will clinch a spot in the Sun Belt Championship game. Today, and they would play the Western Division champ, Louisiana, the team that we saw a week ago, Ben, knock off Troy to not only win the West, but to host. Well, and if you don't think these guys want another crack at Louisiana, yes. Tuesday, October 12th, they got hammered by the Raging Cajuns, 41-13. And I think that might be a little bit different ball game here late in the year. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. That was, that's what really, when I saw that game, Louisiana, what they did to App State, that was amazing. That's that's probably the signature win for anybody yeah. in the Sun Belt this year. Obviously, you had Coastal got upset a week ago. Uh, and anytime you can beat Coastal, App State's win over Coastal may actually be the signature win, but I don't know, man. That, that hit, beat down from Louisiana was <laughs> pretty impressive. Chip Lindsey, you see in his third year, he's won five each of the first three years. A win today would give him sixth this season. Watson does a nice job. He's got a completion, and Tez Johnson takes it into App State territory. What a terrific catch and run. Caden Smith finally tackled him, but that's that big play capability you get from Johnson. Yeah, here's the thing. All right, so Troy's offense athletic enough to move the ball down the field. You got to finish a drive, though. Johnson again. Back-to-back -back receptions for Tez Johnson. Came in second in the Sun Belt. Top 30 nationally in receptions with 59. He now has 61. And so one of the things coming into this game today, Troy in the red zone, 20 more yards are there, 79%. That's good for 96 in the country, which has been a, a real problem for them this season, finishing drives. Madison Cohn, the transfer from Wisconsin on that tackle. Here's Vidal, the right side, takes it inside the 40. That's gonna be enough for another Troy first down. That was Nick Hampton. One thing you're seeing here is Chip Lindsey is calling this game with a little bit more pace than on that last drive even. Uh, they tend to be a little bit more successful when they pick it up a little bit. More of a like a hurry up, no huddle, two minute type offense. That was evidence last week. They were more successful against Louisiana with this pace. And that seems to be the case right now as well. Watson, the deep ball's got a man and it's a touchdown. Deshaun Stottlemyre from 37 yards. And the Trojans are on the board. Stottlemyre going up with beautiful hands. That young man's trying to make Sports Center tonight. And he may have earned it right there. Take another look at this. Oh, that's big time. That is big time. What a grab there. Able to hang on to the ball and dive into the end zone for six. That's a big time play for Troy in this game. Trying to keep those ball hopes alive and, like we mentioned, division title hopes as well in this game as well. 
Brooks Buse in for the extra point. He'll bang that one home. So Stottlemyre's second touchdown of the season. His 18th reception, and it was a biggie. 37 yards. Watson to Stottlemyre, and we're tied at seven. Welcome back to Troy. 7-3 is the score. I think I said 7-7 going into the break. That was some kind of drive, though. Gunnar Watson and company. Four plays, 75 yards. The final 37, that TD toss to Stottlemyer. He threw the ball 55 times last week. That's a huge number. He was 29 of 55 on the weekend uh, threw for, uh, what, 350 in that game against Louisiana. Oh, he's off to a great start today. Kyle Cole with the kickoff. It will be returned. Lots of room on that far side, still on his feet. Finally tackled, that's Malik Williams. Wow, on the season, just three kickoff returns for a 20-yard average. His long was 23. He absolutely crushed that long for the year. Well, Del Pettis with the big time save there too to keep that one from going for six. Yeah, so Pettis, that nice tackle there to prevent it. A kickoff return for a touchdown, but 7-3 now. Troy with the lead. App State now with the football and in great field position. So let's see what Chase Bryce, what kind of counterpunch the Mountaineers will do. Bryce three for five so far up top for 40 yards. A bit of a trend with this team with App State. If they can get through a game without turning the ball over, they usually can acquire a pretty comfortable lead against teams. Bryce will scramble. He was tackled by A.J. Pierce, number 97, the sophomore from just down the road at, from Dothan. He's playing a lot today along with Buda Jones. Elgin Griffin was a scratch. He, will, he is not going to be able to play today. Either will uh, Jaden McDonald. We have not seen McDonald uh, the last month. That's a big loss, one of the linebackers for Troy. Yeah, Buda Jones, a guy, too, for this defense that uh, coaches have talked a lot about. He, he's a, they say he's a playmaker as well. On the ground near the 30-yard line, maybe the 31. It looks like the forward progress. That was uh, Harrington with his first uh, carry of the day, and that was Medina, Lewis Medina, one of the nose tackles. We talked about uh, Pierce just got that last tackle. Medina also from Chattanooga, the transfer, his 20th tackle of the year. So here you go. This is, I would say, four down territory for App State. Not afraid to go for it on fourth and short. Staten this year has a long of 48. So it would be a 48-yarder right here if they don't gain a, anything, but they will. They look for Hennigan. They have found Hennigan, and he's got another first down. What a nice play fake there to pull the ball back. I mean, had everybody on the field fooled. Watch Bryce there. He sold it, man. Able to get the pass out for the first down. It was a great, great play by the quarterback. Hennigan had five catches for 37 yards a week ago and a touchdown. All-time pass receiver when it comes to catches in school history, now with 223 in his career. It's Harrington. Hard to get any pub when you got Peoples and Noel, but uh, Harrington, he's the backup to Peoples. He had 57 yards to come into this game on 14 carries on the season. Kind of a giveaway there that that was a run. Uh, they shifted 87, Eli Wilson, over to the left, just flanked in front of the back to give that run play some uh, extra blocking. We'll see what they do here in the next couple of plays. This time he's lined up to the right-hand side, just off the just off the shoulder there of Bryce. Noel is behind Bryce, the fake to Noel. Plenty of time, and he will pass to Noel, but got hit right away. That was T.J. Harris again. Played that one extremely well. So, and on that play, they used Wilson as a decoy. He, he shoots off uh, across the front of Bryce. 
almost into a, a pass uh, opportunity there for the quarterback. Harris looks like he got dinged up on that play. Very valuable on that Troy defense. T.J. Harris now with over 50 tackles on the year. And some movement up front on a third down and five. They're going false start here. Everybody points at everybody yeah. <laughs> when that happens, but the official comes in and uh, it says it's a uh, says it's on that offensive line. Offside defense causing a member of the offense to move. Five yard penalty results in a first so down. I, upon further discussion, then. I <laughs> yes. And that's a big five yards because now instead of third and five, you get the first down. Well, and he did. We all know this. He, he rolled his hands, the official did, when he came in. Watch him right there. So yeah. I, I, I thought, okay. I was with you, Ben. Yeah. start, but Yeah. I just want to make sure everybody knows I'm not crazy. Well, no, we bit <laughs> on the play action on that one, evidently. <laughs> Under three minutes left here in the first quarter. Down near the 10 yard line, that's Noel again. Getting closer and closer to 1,000 yards on the year. Yeah, he started the day with 9-11 uh, and three touchdowns. Only had 22 yards on seven carries last week. Peoples had 90 yards in that game. What may be more impressive is that App State was able to convince him to leave the Miami area, mm -hmm. sunny Miami, and go to a cooler climate. Yes, especially this time of <laughs> App year. App State, in yeah. <laughs> Snap bobbled a bit, uh, flag up front, and I think again there is some motion. Five yard penalty. Second we talked about this in pregame. On your list of places to go and see a football game, I have not been to a game at, at App State. But it's on to places to go. Oh, uh, every yeah. time I tune into a football game there, the whole crowd is electric. And I hope some folks from Boone are watching us today because hats off to you folks. You, you have an electric football atmosphere there. It shows on TV, and it's, it's a raucous environment. Doesn't matter if it's warm yeah. or cold. Doesn't uh, yeah. matter if there's yeah. snow or sleet or whatever. I think, I think they like it cold there. <laughs> <laughs> it's a beautiful setting, no doubt. So second down and 11. Let's see what Bryce will do. He'll call his own number, sneaks down to the 10. I thought he was going to get hit and dropped at the 15, but he kind of ducked his head and was able to pick up five. That was number 99, Glasgow, on yeah. that tackle. And with that move there, he kind of made where he, he ducked down a little bit, able to gain a couple more yards. So third and five, again, four down territory. If you gain eh, three yards here, I would feel pretty decent about a fourth down shot. Yeah, oh yeah. Glasgow is the transfer from Maryland out of Mount Vernon High School in New York. Third down, five yards to go. That is Noel behind him, and the give is to Noel, and he's gonna get hit behind the line. A tackle for a loss by K.J. Robertson. The junior from Alabaster just makes plays, doesn't he? Yeah, 6'1", 235, comes barreling through there. Talked about that defensive front earlier. These guys are nasty, man. They play with a vengeance, and they came through with some heavy, heavy pressure there, able to shut it down. Fourth tackle for a loss this year for Robertson, and here comes Staten, Chandler Staten. This will be a 30-yarder off the hold of Clayton Howell. 30-yard field goal this year. Staten from 30 to 39, three for three. And he has missed. So Chandler Staten is a human after all. He's not a robot. He had missed all season long. Field goals, extra points, but a missed field goal there. And Troy keeps the 7-3 lead. We'll go ahead and chalk that one up as the broadcaster jinx. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Today. Colmeyer curse. <laughs> Hashtag get Colmeyer curse. Announcer whammy, whatever you want to say. You start pointing out stats like that, and of course, of yeah. course that's how it goes, right? Yeah. Wow. That yeah, kid hadn't missed one all year. And he hadn't. <laughs> I mean, he was, you talk about automatic. I mean, Man. it's a no-brainer for the Luke Groza uh, award when it – no surprise that he's a semifinalist. So let's see now with the uh, Trojans. 
And here's the thing. You grade both teams start so far. We're about to end the first quarter. I'm giving everybody a B-plus at this point. Watson on first down on the last play of the first quarter. Tez Johnson got upended by Stephen Jones, and that's how we end the first quarter. The Trojans will have the football. Not a good sign right there. Tez Johnson limping as the first quarter ends. Troy with the lead when we come back. Welcome back as we start the second quarter. Tez Johnson got dinged up on that last play. Got hit pretty good by but Stephen Jones. Numbers on the helmets today for Troy on one side. That's a new touch uh, to the uniforms this week. So the first carry of the second quarter, it's B.J. Smith, one of the seniors that was honored uh, just before the game. Nice career for B.J., battled a couple big injuries. That tackle by Prince, DeAndre Dingle Prince. Out of Sanford, North Carolina. You're talking about uniforms. Troy likes to mix it up quite a bit, almost the way of like the Oregon Ducks. <laughs> yeah. App State, more of a kind of an Alabama Crimson Tide uh, attitude about uniforms. Watson down the field, and there's a flag. He was looking for Demontrez Brown, who has really come on into his own as of late. Had a couple catches last week for 38 yards. Had a big game the week before against South Alabama. And a flag in that secondary. So we'll see what happened there. I didn't catch the route myself. It Half happened early. Holding. Fourth down. So it's waved off. They picked it up. So now it's fourth down at the 26-yard line. And, yes, you got to bring in Magliozzi. Luke Magliozzi. Last week, punted five times for a 41-yard average on the year, just over 42 yards. First punt of the day today. Troy, of course, had the deep drive early on the first drive of the game. Vidal fumbled the ball, but it was deep enough on the other end of the field. Then, of course, the touchdown drive as well. Magliozzi. He'll take a Troy bounce, and then nice job by Hennigan, I think, back deep. Yeah, that was Hennigan to not let the ball bounce any further. So it'll be first down and 10 for App State when we come back. 14-11 left in the first half. Welcome back to Troy, top of the class. The most FBS wins since 2015. Obviously, some no-brainers. You think of Bama, Clemson, Ohio State, Boomer Sooner, the Junkyard Dogs, but there's App State. They just how about that? Win. How about that list there? Yes. That's good that's, company. That's a who's who. 84.4% against league foes during that time as well for App State. And there's Hennigan with another reception. His third of the afternoon, K.J. Robertson with the stop. And you got to think, I guess maybe the victory at Michigan in the big house, still an FCS team at the yes. time. That's, to me, when this program caught fire. Yeah. yeah, it definitely turned a lot of heads. You know, they played their 100th game as an FBS program last weekend when they beat uh, South Alabama 78-22 and 22 in their first 100 games on the FBS level. Oh, yeah. Pretty dang strong. A power at the lower level, and yes, they've kept it up. Not a lot of teams been able to do that in the no. move to FBS. That's Peoples on the carry. Gets a first down. Peoples now with his fourth carry of the afternoon. Noel was the big gainer in the first quarter. Five carries for 41 yards. Troy was very successful in lower levels of football. Wasn't able to immediately flip it into FBS uh, back when they transitioned in 2001. Another team that was, for, for a brief period, Georgia Southern came in and won the Sun Belt their first year playing at FBS level. But App State, man, these guys are writing a book on how to do this. 
And they always seem to play with a chip on their shoulder. I know it's that attitude that they take, and maybe that's why they're so successful. And they really haven't gotten the pub the last couple of years because what Coastal has done, there's a nice play there by uh, Devin uh, Barrett, the transfer from Auburn, one of the backup corners for Troy. That stops Peoples on that one. Yeah, you're right. It has been a little overshadowed uh, because especially last season you had great success. Boy, last year was a, almost a showcase year for the Sun Belt. Yes. Because for the first couple of weeks, it was just about the only show in the country. There's no doubt. So you had Louisiana and Coastal who got off to remarkable starts. And that uh, and they jumped into the polls and they managed to hang out in the polls for the last two years. A couple weeks ago, well, I guess it's last month, App State beat Coastal. That one is picked off. Wow. So the interception by Kyle Nixon, one of the seniors that was honored before the game. That's a big time play for the Trojan D. Kyle Nixon having a day today. He gets the interception here. He also made a touchdown saving tackle earlier in the game. Young man is playing a whale of a ball game so far. In games where App State turns the ball over, their opponents have managed to keep the game a little bit tighter through the season. That's going to be a key for Troy today. I think if Troy can get two turnovers in this game and hold App State to none, they got a great chance to get out of here with a win. Ninth interception of the year for Bryce, and that's the first pick of the season for Nixon. So let's see what Watson and the Troy offense can do. On first down, the some big time pressure on Watson, and that forced that incomplete pass to B.J. Smith. Yeah, you got like Jordan Earl. Yeah, Mr. Earl from West Palm Beach, Florida, introducing himself there <laughs> to Gunnar Watson. His fourth quarterback hurry of the year. So second down and ten. That defensive line really good for App State and we talked about how good their linebackers are but the App State folks were quick to tell us those linebackers wouldn't have the years that they were having if not for that defensive line. Here's B.J. Smith again and it looks like B.J. will lose a couple yards. That was T.D. Roof the transfer from Indiana. He had seven tackles two sacks in his first career start earlier this year at Miami. Yeah you're right though across the front uh, Demetrius Taylor number nine He's on the year of 16 tackles, eight for a loss, eight quarterback hurries. And we mentioned Earl, 14 tackles and three quarterback hurries. And then Caleb Sperlin on the other side, 23 tackles. He's got almost two sacks and three losses, two quarterback hurries. Sperlin wears number 97, and there he there is. He is <laughs> right making there. a play right yeah. on cue, Caleb Sperlin. <laughs> His fourth tackle for a loss. It's like we announced him into the broadcast here. <laughs> He's like at the scorer's desk coming in to a basketball game. And that will force a fourth down. He's from uh, Galax, Virginia. So here's Magliozzi in to punt. As you mentioned earlier, Ben, no punts in the first quarter. All punts in the second, though. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's a big time stop for App State's defense there, too. Nothing special, just tied it up up front with just filling gaps, and Troy couldn't do anything about it. Agliozzi turned on that one. Here's Williams on the return. He's got room, and Malik Williams up near midfield. Boy, you blink, and he is past you. Came in with a seven-yard punt return average. He definitely exceeded that, and great field position for App State when we come back. Left in our first half, Troy leading half state. Mountaineers with a win today, clinch the spot in the Sun Belt Conference Championship game two weeks from today at Louisiana. Troy got the big interception there. He didn't burn any clock off of that opportunity, though. Yeah, they went backwards, in fact. Bryce goes right back up top after the pick, and he's got Sutton on that far side, and that's a first down. Sutton. 
That's a great start there and a quick out for a first down. Hit three catches for 34 yards and a touchdown last week. He's the transfer from Kansas State. Waiting to see Bryce and his offense slow it down a little bit, get a little more methodical, and really just settle into this game. They haven't quite been able to do that this afternoon. First down carry of two yards. That was Noel on the carry and T.J. Harris on the tackle. Good to see T.J. Harris back after getting dinged up earlier. Yeah, and a lot of that reason that uh, App State hasn't been able to settle into this game, too, is a credit to that defensive front, front for Troy this afternoon. Noel again. That was Marshall, number two, Carlton Marshall. He started the day 43 tackles shy of the Sunbelt Conference record for tackles. I think Jibinor jumped in on that tackle, too. Okay. How about Marshall? Obviously, well, it'd be pretty tough to top it this year, 43 tackles in two games, but if Troy goes bowling, he's got a chance to break the all-time conference record for tackles this season. Number one nationally among all active players, about nine and a half tackles per game. Yeah, impressive. Mr. Consistent. Very impressive. And his coaches just rave about oh. him as a human being, too. Better person than player. And good pressure applied that time on Bryce and maybe forced Bryce to throw it a little sooner than he wanted. That was K.J. Robertson with the quarterback hurry. Yeah, he had one of those last week, too. Three tackles in a quarterback hurry last Saturday, and uh, he got – thats that makes your defensive coordinator pretty happy there when you can get a lick on the quarterback. You know, nothing ugly, just a little bit of pressure. That's right. Introduce him to the turf. Let him know that you're coming. You'll be back next play. <laughs> that does stick around with a quarterback for a, a, a couple of plays at least. Troy's done a nice job been able to shoot through at least one guy with some pressure. Fourth down, they're going for it. Fourth and four. Bryce pressured and picked off by K.J. Robertson. And two straight drives, two straight interceptions for the Trojans. That's my stat of the day. If Troy could get two turnovers in this game and hold App State to zero, I feel like they that's what an ingredient they would need to win the ball game. So you're going right now, Troy's going to win this game? I, I, if, if, if it if holds. If, if it holds, holds. Yeah. yeah. Trojans, no turnovers. That's a key stat, no doubt. That's where, and, and in games where App State has turned the ball over multiple times, has either been pretty close or a loss. Robertson's second pick of the year. Remember, he had that pick six, 32-yard touchdown return against South Alabama a couple weeks ago. That started this three-game homestand, if you will. Crazy. Never see that in conference play. Three straight home games. That's what this is uh, this year for Troy, the third in as many weeks. Fidel got hit behind the line of scrimmage. That's DeMarco Jackson. He is the real deal, folks. The senior out of Spartanburg, South Carolina. Well, and the key there is not even the play itself. It's that they ran the ball on first down to get some movement on the clock. Because the last possession that Troy had, I, I, I'm not even sure they burned 35 seconds off the clock after uh, the previous turnover. Jackson last week, seven tackles and a pass breakup. That's a tackle for a loss right there. Here's a little dump pass as Watson checks down, finds Vidal up to the 45, 46 yard line. That was Trey Cobb on the stop. So third down, that's a big play. Yeah, it certainly is. And, and talking about turnovers uh, with App State, go back to a loss against Miami. They lost a turnover battle. They lost the game against Miami. That was the second game of the season. That was against number 22 Miami at that time, 25-23. App State had a chance to knock off a top 25 team that day. Third and one, and Vidal didn't get a yard. He got hit at the line by Nick Hampton, the junior from Anderson, South Carolina. He's played 34 games since the start of the 19 season, 14 and a half sacks, 25 tackles for a loss since the beginning of that 2019 season. It's fourth and one, and Troy's going to go for it. 
That's the kind of gutsy play you got to have right here, uh, fourth down and, and, and convert some of these if you want to get out of here with a W today. Young Cray Lewis, the tight end, starting tight end, is out today for the Trojans. That might have been a target here. You play action and look for the tight end. But fourth and one. Also, DeAndre Butler, the starting left guard, he is out. Cannon Biggs making a start, number 75 in his place of him. And now Chip Lindsay will just call timeout. Going to take a, a, a moment to talk this over. Don't be surprised if they come back out and uh, spread it out like that and then run the ball. We'll see what the Trojans do on fourth down when we come back. Ten left in the first half, and Troy has changed his mind. It's Magliosi in. Troy coming in 72% on fourth down conversions this year, 13 out of 18. But Magliosi on the punt, fair caught by Hennigan, and so App State will have it first down and 10 at its own 21-yard line. I actually like the prospect of going for it there. Uh, at fourth and one. Troy had a bunch of fourth and one opportunities against Coastal Carolina and lost a close game on the road. And I felt like they maybe should roll tight. That state will have it when we come back. So a couple interceptions here in the first half have really helped the Troy cause. Kyle Nixon and K.J. Robertson with the picks. Troy coming in, tied for sixth in FBS and forced turnovers with 22. And they've got those two picks here today. So first down and 10 for App State at the 22-yard line. And they'll give it to Cameron Peoples on first down. Leads the Sunbelt Conference with 13 rushing touchdowns, and he's missed two games. Talking about turnovers, lost the turnover battle against Miami, lost the game. Lost the turnover battle against Louisiana. Lost the game big in that one. Lost the turnover battle against Marshall. Able to eke it out against the Thundering Herd. App State's a better football team than Marshall uh, and maybe should be able to spot them a turnover uh, and still get out with a win, and that was the case there. Can't wait to see, because of course that's a big rivalry already, App State and Marshall, and that'll be a part of the uh, Sunbelt going forward, right? Marshall yep. now joining the, the uh, conference. There is Peoples again, trying the right side up to the 28-yard line. Somewhat uh, neighbors up in that region of the country, too. Now, against South Alabama, App State with the tie in the turnover column. Actually, there's a fumble that puts South over the top there. So they win the turnover battle just barely against South. Able to get a big win, though, on the scoreboard. That's the only outlier from that kind of statistic. You get you win the turnover battle with App State, it's going to be a close game. I'm just impressed with your homework. Nice job. Way to do it. Nice prep work there, partner. Third down. Here's Bryce. Nice check down. He's got the first down. Malik Williams, fifth in career catches at App State with 185. He's also fifth in school history with career yards now at 2,300 yards. 2,300 yards. Yeah, that's not bad, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Del Pettis and Carlton Marshall in on that tackle. Uh, 2,300 yards, pretty decent. <laughs> in a career. What'd you get this next nugget? Here's Chase Bryce, little option up to the 39-yard line. Give Bryce four. App State is the only FBS team with three active players with 2,000 plus yards of receiving in their career. Three of them. Texas Tech has two, and nobody else has more than one. And Texas Tech throws the ball all the time. Yes. So think about that, too. App State runs the ball a healthy amount of times. And then to have guys with that kind of yardage, impressive. Yeah, they run the ball 194 yards a game on the ground. That's also why App State's on that list we showed you earlier with, uh, what, George? Offense, Oklahoma, number 74. Five yard penalty. Remain second down. Leaving somebody out there, but. That motion will push him back five. Not quite having the best offensive outing today in the first half, though. Got to give Troy some and credit, that's credit. Yeah, that's credit to the home team here. Yes. This defense is playing lights out. And 
if Troy's offense can help to, uh, uh, I guess, uh, be complimentary. Yeah, there we go. That's the word I was looking for. Complimentary to that fact. This could be a rough day for the Mountaineers. No room in the end on that one. Just a run up the middle and goodness. So it'll be interesting to see what type of halftime adjustments offensively, well, really both teams on offense will make in, in, the, in the intermission here coming up. And I think for Troy, you've got to play with a little bit of pace. For App State, offensive line's got to tighten it up a little bit and keep the pressure off of Bryce. Look for those passes just across the middle, about where uh, Carlton Marshall's standing right now. Third down, 10 yards to go. And it's Harrington for two. That was Marshall again in on that tackle. See, and that's the thing, front seven for Troy. I, it just in shutdown mode right now. That was a great play by Marshall. All over that. Going to get the ball back here. Two minutes and 31 seconds on the clock as it stands right now. So you're going to get, you're going to put two minute offense on the field. And again, can't tell you enough. That's when I think Chip Lindsey is at his best as a play caller. You give him two minutes, tell him he's got to get 80 yards. They don't always score, but they can get the yardage. On our Zoom calls, Chip Lindsay always smiles when you talk about that to him as well. Yeah, well, and, sense, and, of, sense of pride. Listen, and, and I'm not, uh, you know, I mean, obviously I'm gonna, gonna, gonna stroke the head coach's ego a little bit. Yeah, right. Yeah. I mean, and, and let me tell you, Chip Lindsay, first class guy with us all the oh, time. Gives us all the time in the world. I come on and ask some really dumb questions from time to time. <laughs> And, uh, you know, he, he's always super nice with us. So I appreciate that. Yeah, appreciate him and the coordinators. Luke Meadows and Brandon Hall. Good sign seeing Tez Johnson back awaiting this punt by Xavier Sabach. We've got a couple Australians going after each other again today. This yeah, week that's in Aust punting. Aust they got a, punt, a punter factory down there uh, oh. in Australia. I mean, I can't tell you how many games we've called this year, and the majority of them have had at least one, and a lot of them have had both punters from Australia. Yeah, it's been pretty impressive. Uh, I mean, really through the years, to uh, go back to, uh, I guess, uh, 2012, that Alabama LSU National Championship game, everyone that kicked the ball on the field that night, I'm, I'm pretty sure was from Australia. Watson, seven for 12 so far, 90 yards. You see 90 of the 132 for Troy have been up top. They'll run on first down. Maybe two yards for Woods. And that that's- Jamontez Woods, I beg your pardon. Well, on first down, they're trying to, what they're trying to accomplish a yardage, not a big deal. You get a couple of setup yards, great. You want the clock running because you don't want to give App State the ball back here uh, before this half is over with. So Troy's obviously going to try to, you know, hog the clock here, but also get some points out of this before the first half comes to a close. That was Woods' first carry of the afternoon. Watson got engulfed. Wow. What a hit by TD Roof That'll of Buford, Georgia. That'll also keep the clock running. <laughs> wow. <laughs> His third sack of the year, and Gunnar Watson's going to remember that one for a while. That's just a man sack right Whoa. there. Yeah. I Look mean, at Watson coming over to the – he's getting a little help from his teammates as well. Roof came through with a vengeance there. Mm. Had seven tackles, two sacks in his first career start at App State. That was that game at Miami that we were talking about earlier. And yeah, we'll show you that one again here in just a second. Over 50 tackles now on the year for Roof. He was fired up too. I don't think I would have wanted to be on the front end of that fist pump afterwards either. Mm. That's just a tough looking guy right there. Had six tackles. One and a half of those were for losses last week. Had a quarterback hurry. Five eleven, two fifteen, and Gunnar Watson felt every yeah. ounce of that, like a missile. 
All right, now it's third and 16. You got to be really careful now. Ball at the 15-yard line. Remember, late in the first half in that game, Troy at South Carolina, a late turnover in the first half, changed the complexion. And because of that, Troy takes it easy and calls a conservative play. Kamani Vidal and DeMarco Jackson was the first Mountaineer to hit Vidal. I'm a big fan of that play call there, too, because you're not trying to do anything dangerous. No. Uh, in a game just like this this state. season, this Troy at South Carolina. Right. Carolina. Here's the and in this very in situation, a couple points One, two, difference nine. in the ball game. Troy was in great Thank shape, you. threw an interception, pick six if I recall correctly. South Carolina takes it to the house. That was the difference in the ball game through the third and fourth quarters. So nice conservative play call, punt the ball away, hopefully take it into the locker room if you're the home team with a four-point lead. If you're App State, got 89 seconds here to make something happen. And we've seen these guys move the ball quickly a couple of times this year. Oh, no question. And they have one timeout as well. Yeah. For head coach Sean Clark. I actually love this position for App State because you're going to field the punt around the 40-yard line, give or take. Yeah, Magliozzi has been known to bomb a few further than that. He's going to have to uncoil on one. But remember the last time he might have outkicked his coverage. And Malik Williams had a really nice return. And Williams is back deep this time as well. This is more of a line driver. It will be returned. And Williams scoots out of bounds. The Troy folks were hoping for a maybe a block in the back. But it'll be first down and 10 at the 39-yard line. So App State with a timeout. A buck 21 left here in the first half. All kinds of time for their fine quarterback, Chase Bryce, and that Mountaineer offense. Yeah, I think that's exactly the punt that Troy wanted. You see the time of possession here, huge difference. Mm. Troy statistically doesn't win when they don't win time of possession. But a couple of anomalies on that stat this year. One came when they played against South Alabama. Turnovers helped in that game too. Yeah, Chip Lindsey usually, I think he's 10 and 2 when he wins the time of possession battle. Yeah, that's that on TV right now. Huh? How about that? There's a nice run on the far side by Noel. And that will take it inside the 40. So in pretty close to field goal range, right? The long is 48. If I'm not mistaken, on the season for App State. Noel having a nice first down. Uh, I should say a first half, and he had a nice pickup there on first down. That's Elijah Culp with the tackle, his 26th of the season. He's the transfer from Austin P. Under a minute left, six yards on that carry. That run by Noel earlier was for 24, and there's a pass to Hennigan. He's a Wes Welker with size. Yeah. I, Super steady. I can agree with that. Yeah, App State not thinking about field goals right now. No, no, no. They want the lead going into halftime. And there's 49 ticks left. And a rare, really, drive earlier in this game where they got in the red zone and didn't come away with anything. That's only happened three times this year prior to this game today. Noel. Falls forward for two and a timeout App State. Third and final charge timeout, Appalachia State. This will be a 30 second timeout. So, how do you draw this up here? I, I uh, take a shot to the end zone. Yeah, you've got to now be a little bit more cautious. You got, uh, you just burned your last timeout. There's still 44 seconds left, so you've got some options. Do you do it on this, this coming up play here on second down? Well, he definitely has his share of receivers. I mean, Hennigan, Williams, Tucker, we talked about them being the only FBS team with those three active players with 2,000 plus yards of receiving. I mean, he's got playmakers all over the place. Yeah, I certainly do. So, what I like was this stat. Chase Bryce, in his first, what, three years in the FBS, he had a game high 279 yards passing. This year, he's already done that four times in one year. He had 347 against Coastal Carolina, 326 against Georgia State. We'll see if he goes up top here. 
you think he would on second and eight at the 23 yard line. Bryce near side. It was low. It was caught, and that's a break for Troy. Very little yardage. Eli Wilson gets the catch, his seventh of the season, but the clock continues to run. I think they like the, the clock movement here, and now we'll take a shot toward the end zone. Far side toward the end zone. Touchdown, Corey Sutton. His 24th touchdown reception as a Mountaineer. You're all over that one. Yeah. Get the clock moving. You don't want Troy to have any time if you do score. Nice short pass. Great touchdown reception. Falling back, Sutton. Nice job. Just like, just like we caught it right out of the boot. How about that? <laughs> And so Staten will be in for the extra point. He's 42 out of 42 this year. Including four for four a week ago in that win against South Alabama. So huge momentum shift here to end the half as well. No question. I mean, Troy, you thought at least would have it. If they just hold them to a field goal, they still got the lead going into intermission. So, but, uh, I, and yeah. I, I go back to if, if you want to win a game like this, man, that's the big dogs on the visiting sideline here. Potentially going to wrap up the division title today. On fourth and one, I think you go for it. Whereas Chip Lindsey got conservative early, thought about going for it, pulled back on that, punted the ball away. I think there were opportunities to, to keep drives alive in this first half and maybe put some more points on the board. That's just one glaring stat to me. Troy's still winning the turnover battle, two to nothing though. And as far as I'm concerned, they're gonna be in this ball game unless that changes. It'll be a tight ball game. 61 yards in six, six plays you saw. The stat at the bottom of your screen only took a minute. 21-yard touchdown from Bryce to Sutton. And here's Hughes to kick off. Well, it was just a great fade, too. Lovely touchdown pass. And a squibber. I tell you another thing to watch out for here, too. Against Coastal Carolina, App State was down two touchdowns. They scored a touchdown to bring it within seven and then popped the most immaculate onside kick against Coastal Carolina that maybe I've ever seen. Unexpected, nobody in the country was counting on that and they were all over it. So look for that maybe in the second half. This is a tight ball game. Love the onside kick potential from App State in this game as well. So the ball at the 35, but Troy decides just to take a knee, and that's how the first half will end. What's been the difference so far, Ben? Uh, turnovers. Uh, that's what uh, helped Troy out tremendously. It's what's kept points off the board for App State. You call it this field goal. I would equate that to maybe even a turnover as well, because Kicker had missed one all year long. So really, that to me has been the difference in the ballgame. Help the home team out this afternoon. We are at halftime here in Troy. App State with that late touchdown leads it 10 to 7. Will Colmeyer, Ben Stanfield back here along with Jeremiah Paris and the rest of our ESPN crew. Glad you're with us here on a Saturday afternoon. Let's check out the first half highlights. This is a big play early on for Troy. Monty Vidal breaks a big one, but he fumbles at the end of the drive, and then that leads to App State with a field goal early on by State. Then how about this pass from Watson to Stottlemyre and the Trojans were on the board. Yeah, that was a great touchdown catch too. Sports center worthy catch to start things off on the scoring today. KJ Robertson with a big play. This forces a field goal attempt and for the first time all year, State misses a kick. Then later on, Nixon with an interception. KJ Robertson had an interception as well. Two straight drives with kicks, but no 
points off the turnovers for the Trojans. Yeah, that was a big thing for App State, the fact that the defense came out and held Troy. Uh, Troy still winning that turnover battle 2-1. to one. That could pay a big dividend down the stretch. But those two interceptions, though, were huge in the first half, at least momentum killers for App State's offense. Speaking of killing, here's TD Roof unloading on Gunnar Watson. This was late in the uh, first half on that last drive, and then DeMarco Jackson does a nice job. And so Troy has to punt the ball away from inside uh, their 20. Nice run by Noel, and then that sets up this play. A uh, nice conversion to Hennigan, and there's your fade there, Ben. Yeah, just a beautifully drawn up play. They got the clock rolling, under 30 seconds there, and they popped that touchdown pass on the fade route to take the 10-7 lead. Nice drive there to close it out for Ass State. Yeah, Bryce to Sutton. Caps off a six play, 61 yard drive, only took a minute. We'll take a look at the first half numbers. When we return, it's 10-7 Mountaineers here at All right, we're ready for the second half. John Clark, Amp State with the lead here at the half. Clark was the only first year FBS head coach last year to win nine plus games. And how about this nugget? as he gets to take on Chip Lindsey here today. Clark, 18 and five, 78.3%. That's sixth best in the, currently in the FBS. Number one among the group five head coaches when it comes to winning percentage. Well, and I tell you that carousel is uh, in full speed already this season. His phone's gonna ring just like Eli Drinkwitz's phone rang. He gets shipped off to Missouri and uh, is now in the SEC. And so uh, it's, it, it, this could be the year where you see a lot of names in the Sun Belt that have been there for a couple of years now. Think of teams like Coastal, obviously Napier down at Louisiana, his name comes up all the time. And Sean Clark's done a remarkable job uh, just sustaining the success at App State. So don't be surprised if, uh, if some pretty strong offers come his way. Cole will kick off. Back deep, you saw Virgil, number 11. Malik Williams also back deep, number 14. And Kyle Cole out of California. And App State will have some really good field position to start their first drive here in the second half. 36-yard line. It is really good field position, but it's not as good as what they saw some in the first half. That's why Troy kicked that ball low like that. App State had some really great returns in this first half. Now, one of the keys here, if you're App State, I try to go for the fast start here. Uh, maybe a quick run and then gun one down the field if you can. Try and get some points on the board early. Maybe shell shock Troy a little bit, and you would be scoring on back-to-back -back possessions and put this game Asking Troy to overcome a, a 10 point deficit uh, would be a tall order in a game that's been as tight as this one. You saw the numbers for Bryce in the first half. What will he do on the first play from scrimmage? Hennigan was in motion, and that's Noel. Noel in the first half, 10 carries, 78 yards. Had a long of 24. That's Will Cholo making the tackle. Yeah, and really, I mean, the, the ground game for App State in the first half, very effective. Uh, but that's something that could improve in the second half because Troy's front seven brought it against this team in the first two quarters. Brandon Hall and his Troy defense. They've been tough for most of the year. Up top, Bryce looking for Hennigan. He's got Hennigan down to the 21-yard line. Elijah Culp on the coverage, but that was a perfect pass and another terrific catch by Hennigan. Exactly what you want to do to Troy there defensively. Try and shell shock them out of the gate, like we mentioned. Get something going, take a deep shot, and then try to punch it in the end zone in one of these next two plays and really get this defense backpedaling. Inside the 15, down to the 13-yard line is Nate Noel 
the transfer from Northwestern. That was T.J. Harris there on the tackle, it looked like. And a big time stop. Maybe stay with the ground game though here. See Noel's number. He takes it inside the 10. That's going to be a first down for Nate Noel out of Miami, Florida. He now has 1,000 yards. He's needed 89 coming in. That's now 10 straight years. App State has had at least one 1,000-yard rusher. Yeah, pretty impressive and uh, going to get some water out of the deal for that too. <laughs> Hopefully a pat on the back. Maybe the sideline knows he's hit 1,000 yards and somebody reach down and tell him. <laughs> Or uh, don't tell him. Tell there him he's go. at 995 the rest of the day. There you go. <laughs> First and goal at the nine. That's Cameron Peoples down to the six-yard line. Once again, that Troy defense trying to stiffen and try to just keep it App State for a field goal attempt. Yeah, well, I, and that's, that's obviously the win for Troy at this point. Already got a missed field goal on the day for App State. And now another key here, too, is if you're App State, have something drawn up because Troy's not going to let you just pound the ball through the middle. They're going to force you outside. They've done a nice job of playing contained to the sidelines today, too. I think App State's got to go to the air if they want to score a touchdown here. Bryce will roll right. He finds Hennigan, and he's in the end zone for a touchdown. Thomas Hennigan, his fourth TD reception of the season. And he now has 21 in his career. Yeah, Hennigan and just wide open there, able to just reach across the boundary. Uh, that touchdown line all the way to heaven, and he punches it in for six. Great start for App State, and like you said, that you want Troy's defense backpedaling out of the gate here. Ten-point deficit is huge for the way that Troy's offense has played today, and that may be enough to get the job done to get out of here if it holds. Six-yard pass from Bryce to Hennigan. Staten makes it 17 to seven, and wow, how things have changed. The final minute of the first half and the first couple of minutes here in the second half, and there is Hennigan on yet another touchdown reception for App State. The Mountaineers have had plenty to cheer about. Late in the first half, and then starting the second half, a nice big pass to Hennigan. And then it's Noel taking it inside the 10, and then Bryce to Hennigan. That'll cap off the drive. Six plays, 64 yards, took two minutes and 46 seconds. So Troy's offense will get its first crack at it here in the second half, and they'll start at the 25-yard line. So All right. One thing for Troy here, you got to come out with some pace, push the ball downfield, and points are a must on this drive. You can't afford it. Right now, two-score game cannot afford to go down three scores against this team in App State. No, not against that defense. So first down and 10, Vidal, who had 37 yards on the ground and six carries. And there's an interception. That's TD Roof. Just the second pick of the year for Gunnar Watson. And wow, that is a big time play by Roof in that Mountaineer defense. TD comes from a defensive household. His dad, Ted, defensive coordinator for the Auburn Tigers in 2010 when they won a national championship. He's been the head coach at Duke, currently on the staff at Clemson, who had a big win today, by the way, as well. So a great day for the Roof family. I was thinking about him before that play, and I was going to tell you that I was watching him. Wow. <laughs> I don't get credit for it, no. though. <laughs> but he comes out. He's in perfect position on that interception there. And so what's blown now, the turnover lead for Troy, App State's in position here and really can bust this thing open with a touchdown. Roof's second interception of the year. And you're right. Troy's defense has really got a bow up here as App State will start first and goal at the 10. Peoples behind Bryce, and Bryce will flip it to the tight end down near the end zone. Did he get in? 
I believe he did. Yes, he did. That is Eli Wilson with his first TD reception of the season. And the Mountaineers with two touchdowns in the first three minutes here in the second half. Can you tell that App State's having a little bit of fun right now, too? These guys have the vibe, and they are making it look easy on the football field. He got that pylon. Talking with the instant replay official before our broadcast tonight. You touch any part of that pylon, no matter left side, right side, it's a touchdown, and that thing just goes... What, the extended, right? The old pylon extension? Uh-huh. So you get a couple of uh, couple of inches there off to the side. That's right. Staten makes it 24-7 to App State. Amazing when you think that Troy led 7-3 with less than two minutes left in the first half. Well, and really, yeah, game clock. Speaking of game clock, it was probably, uh, what, three, three, four minutes? or less, and that uh, Troy was just in the lead in this bucket. Now down 24 7. Kickoff coming up. We are back here in Troy, Alabama. Key takeaways most interceptions since 2015. Look who leads the league. How about Be App State leading the country with 117 takeaways? since the start of the 2015 season. Uh, just another impressive stat. I, I mean, there's so many attached to this program with App State, and it shows. One of the, one of the great football programs in the country right now with the way that they stack up with wins, with turnovers, productivity on the football field. They're really doing things right now. Troy's offense has got to start doing some things. Down by three scores now. It certainly got ugly quick in this game. We'll say that. Watson, seven for 13, 90 yards. They were showing blitz. Thought maybe it was somebody was off sides, but there, oh, there is a flag on that far side. I mean, Vidal got gobbled up. As I say, I, I, I felt like Troy didn't necessarily jump on that play either. Maybe thinking that they were an offsides or yes. something blowing it dead there. but Offside, defense, five-yard penalty, repeat first down. And a, a free lick on by the hell there in the backfield. Gosh, <laughs> no doubt. Nick Hampton applied that hit. Uh, you know, I always say let them know you're there yeah. and, and tell them you're coming back. Yeah, he's second on the team with tackles for losses with 12. He would have had another one there if teammate didn't jump offsides. So first and five, that'll help the Trojans. Watson to Vidal. Breaks one tackle. We talk about it all the time. Vidal, one of the national leaders when it comes to yards after contact. Yeah, and, and an explosive playmaker. If he can get just enough of a gap, and he showed us that on the first drive of the game, but then fumbled the football at the end of the play. I personal opinion here you can shut the panic beacon off for a little while if Troy can score a touchdown on this drive if they don't it's going to be a long stretch here in this ball game Fidel with three receptions on the day he's got 18 on the year now and this is Fidel a punishing run across the 35 up to the 36 yard yeah, line and a much needed first down for the Trojans here's another caveat too for Troy, regardless of whether you get points on the board or not, you have to give the defense a break here because these guys are gassed. They've been out there forever, the, virtually the entire second half, and Troy really was blown out in the time of possession stat in the first half. Only had the ball for nine minutes. Stottlemyre to the 41-yard line. Tackled by Madison Cohn. And Cohn, who made the tackle, is down. He's the transfer from Wisconsin. Grad transfer, that is. 5'9", 185 out of North Carolina. Now with 20 tackles on the year. There was a pickup of five on that play. And that's, that's really where Troy needs to be right now. Short passes, run the ball. 
and convert. Do that three or four times and then potentially see what's available for you with some downfield real estate. We're going to take an injury timeout as Madison Cone is still down. And 27 left in the third quarter. Madison Cone to the sidelines. That Mountaineer needs to give the camera a thumbs up. Right now, it's all Mountaineers, but Troy's offense is going to try to change that. Vidal near the 45-yard line. That was Trey Cobb. We've mentioned his name a bunch today. He had 12 tackles against ULM. Fumble recovery, had his first career interception. Also had a big fourth down tackle in that win against ULM. Trying to get that first down on third and one, and I don't think Vidal got it. Just depends on, no, they're spotting it at the, the line of scrimmage, so it's fourth and one. You're down by three scores. I think Chip Lindsey goes for it here. Uh, yeah, I think you've got to, and I was noticing there on that last play, Tez Johnson was not in the personnel yes. mix. He's coming in with Tez Johnson on the sidelines. It's almost a giveaway that they were going to run the ball there. They haven't gone to Stoudemire a ton. He was he was out on the field. He caught a pass just a few minutes ago, but it, it almost looked super obvious what was happening on that last play. Stoudemire in motion. Watson will throw on fourth and one. And it was intended for Johnson, and it's incomplete. And it's going to be a turnover on downs for Troy, and App State will have it at the 45-yard line. Well, I can't fault Chip Lindsey for going no, for it there, though. No, not at all. That's, a, I mean, a great a great opportunity there if you convert. But, and I think you're in a position right now where you felt like you had to. Uh, I also felt like maybe it should have in the first half, too. There was a fourth and one opportunity that maybe should have rolled the dice on as well. Because the defense has played lights out today. A lot of credit to Troy's defense. Oh, you've, yeah. You've got the turnover there where TD Roof really put them in position to score after the defense was on the field for a long drive. And that's uh, that's what's really busted this game open. Otherwise, I mean, he still held App State to 299 total. Uh, but uh, so far, I mean, time of possession has been a big thing. Defense has been on the field all day today just about. Head coach Sean Clark in a great position right now with the football up 24 to 7 and Bryce going for the big chunk intended for Sutton. There is some contact down there <laughs> yeah. with, by Pettis, but and Sutton's asking about that contact. I, I, I'll ask too. I, I, I felt like the flag should have come out there for pass interference. Sutton third all time at Appalachian State University when it comes to career touchdown receptions. And you can see App State basically double up Troy right now in time of possession. It's Harrington trying the left side. He gets a couple. We talked about Noel coming in first in the Sun Belt in rushing at 91 yards a game. People's second in the conference, 87 and a half, but Harrington's getting his share of carries today. I don't know if a lot of folks saw it there, but tight end Miller Gibbs on that play, junior from Davidson, North Carolina, had an absolute pancake up on the front. And that's been a big difference too to today too, the, the play in the trenches. In the first half, I would say Troy's defense really kind of dominated that. In the second half, half state, we talked about what would be the halftime adjustments well, the big boys up front got a snack and got it together. They've tightened those gaps up. Bryce across the middle. Hennigan, another first down. K.J. Robertson makes yet another tackle. But, yes, Hennigan showing all of us it is a first down watch for the, the Mountaineers. Watch the pocket there, too. You got guys like Cooper Hodges that uh, really held things up there. Anderson Hardy, 6'6", 290. Damian Daly, the big boys getting it done, helping this 
App State team moving down the field. Yeah, it's an impressive offensive line, no doubt. Pickup of two on first down. That's Harrington again. Halfway through the third quarter, and it's been all App State so far. If you can bow up here and get a stop, if you're if you're Troy, potentially force a field goal. Twenty yeah. points. Yeah, still three score game. Not a, not totally undoable. No. And Watson in that uh, Troy offense is capable. And at this point, uh, you know, uh, maybe borrow some notes from Mike Leach <laughs> last <laughs> week. Mississippi State, what came back from twenty five down, score forty unanswered points. In That's the second right. Half. That was also in South Alabama, Southeastern Alabama. There's Sutton again. Sutton with yet another catch. That's his fourth of the afternoon. Hennigan has seven for 85. Hennigan, Sutton, and Wilson all with TD receptions. Makes it tough for Brandon Hall in that Troy defense. What do you do when you, you're rushing for almost five yards a carry and then having a lot of success up top as well? well and your defense is just tired. That's, that's a big thing, too. That is Noel down near the 10. It's a defense this week without McDonald. Jada McDonald, the transfer from Iowa. I haven't seen him in the last month, and that's a big loss for that Troy defense. Also, no Elgin Griffin this week. Now, they have at times been more of a bend but not break type defense, but these guys have been on the field a lot today. Oh, yeah. An unsustainable amount. Bryce will roll right. He's going to try to run the ball, and he takes it down to the five-yard line. And that's going to be enough for a first down. It'll be first and goal at the five. And kudos to Cherokee Glasgow there uh, that able to <laughs> somewhat stay with the quarterback. He's not nearly as quick as, as uh, Bryce, but uh, able to, to force that outside. Bryce had a touchdown run last week. He's got three on the season. He averages three yards a carry, and that counts the sacks against him as well. So it's first and goal. A little eye formation. A little old school football. And into the end zone, a touchdown for Nate Noel. The Sunbelt Conference's leading rusher picks up his fourth touchdown of the season. App State imposing their will in this second half, and it all starts with the guys up front creating those gaps. They're trying to pull away right now and clinch a spot in the Sun Belt title championship game. I like their chances, partner. And right they now. are in route, cruise control <laughs> right now. I mean, they put it into fifth gear in a hurry, folks. And Staten will try to make it. 31 to 7. You can even hear the Mountaineer fans. They are having some fun here as well. 31 to 7. App State leading with 508 left here in the third. Kickoff is coming up next. All right, we'll keep it here. Next week they catch a bit of a, a hot Georgia Southern team. And I say hot, Georgia Southern uh, prior to last week had lost four in a row. They beat Texas State on the road. But by the way, Texas State plays everybody close in this league. Well, but then Georgia Southern was leading BYU. Were, yeah, that's right, was leading BYU, that's correct. So they'll uh, be uh, at App State next weekend. Here's Chase Bryce again. Hennigan. I mean, this is the guy that started out at Clemson, then he went to Duke, now having a lot of weapons to choose from at App State. You see Noel taking it in the final five yards of that 45-yard drive as App State took over on downs. And right now, a lot of smiles for the Mountaineers. Impressive. They're feeling loose, feeling good about life. Hard to beat when you get a team that has that vibe. 
Here's Colvin. And he was upended at the 21-yard line. Marquise Colvin, the transfer from Hutchinson Community College in Kansas, averaging 19 yards a return, did not get that there. And at the 21-yard line, Gunnar Watson, and that offense will just try to get something going. It's an offense that came in eighth in the Sun Belt, averaging 358 yards a game of total offense. Sixth in the Sun Belt in scoring, ninth in rushing, fifth in passing. And remember, Watson led the Sun Belt in passing a year ago. B.J. Smith will be gobbled up. A tackle for a loss and a big-time loss at that. This uh, App State team is known for their losses, tackles for losses. They came in 78 tackles for losses, including 21 in the last two games. It's not so much the offensive stats for Troy that have maybe been the problem offensively. It's literally finishing the drives where, they, where things have gotten weird for them. And like we mentioned, coming into today, 79%. Five tackles for losses. Watson got hit as he threw. Tez Johnson made the catch, but then it was popped out. I mean, he got tattooed by Stephen Jones. He's from Rockingham, North Carolina, and he rocked Tez Johnson's world right there. Yeah, Tez took a pretty good shot there. After he caught the ball, Gunnar Watson took one from behind as he threw the ball. Whoa. Ooh. Yeah, that did not mm, feel good for gosh. Tez Johnson. Get on that hip. So third and 15. Troy, one of six on third down today. Coming in second in the Sun Belt in third down conversions. And that one is in and out of the hands of B.J. Smith. More pressure. This time Tyler Bird, number 51. He was right there. And now it's fourth and 15 and another three and out for Troy's offense. Yeah, the problem right now is uh, the physicality of this App State team is really flexing right now. And it just, it's just spiraled out of control very, very quickly here in the second half. Well, down 31 to 70, Troy has to throw, and App State knows that, and they are just pinning their ears. Yeah, can't, can't uh, keep them out of the backfield. It's, it was a tough go there. Magliozzi, Malik Williams will just step out of bounds. And App State's offense will have it first down and 10 at its own 42. And this second half, when we say it's been all App State, it has been all App State. 119 to 10 when it comes to total yards. And oh, by the way, 21 points in the third quarter as well. Yeah, it's been uh, quite the muscle flex for App State here in the second half, showing why they are a championship caliber team. I got to tell you, if they, you know, obviously if things continue here, uh, barring some sort of uh, re re-energization, re okay. is that a word there? <laughs> We're going with it. I mean, you got Colmeyer here. I'm from Wisconsin. <laughs> we, or, you know, we, that counts. If, if uh, barring anything crazy from the Troy sidelines, yes. I'm excited about a rematch between App State and Louisiana. I guarantee it'll be closer this time. Yeah, I don't think App State got their best shot with Louisiana the first time around. That was Peoples up the middle for a couple. Tackled by Craig Slocum, the former walk-on. With 24 tackles now on the season. He had four a week ago. Clock continues to run. App State in absolutely no hurry. And in talking about that game they played against Louisiana this year, they didn't convert a single third down in that contest. They were 0 for 11 that night. That's not the case here today, and that hasn't been the case the rest of the season as well. That pass is incomplete, intended for Christian Horn. Now four for nine on third down today. No, that's exactly right. And this is a offense on the year, 37.7, so I'll call 38% third down conversion coming in. 64% on fourth down. Be good if Troy can get a three and out here. Give that offense the ball back. There's still 18 and a half minutes left in this game. But 
Troy's going to have to make some big plays. And yeah. maybe even the defense helping him out with a little score or two. Yeah, I don't mind App State taking a deep shot there on that last play either because it would have been a dagger for sure. There's a first down run by Cameron Peoples. He's nearing 750 yards rushing on the season. He had 90 a week ago on 23 carries. He was a workhorse in that win against South Alabama. And these days you need more than just one running back, don't you? I mean, sometimes if, I mean, with all the injuries that we're seeing with running backs, you need at least two or three. And they've got two, standing one and two in the Sun Belt. And Harrington's not bad either. There's a flag on that play. Juvenor in on that stop. He says it's a face mask. We'll see what the official ruling is here. I don't know if he's calling his own penalty there or. <laughs> Our referee Marshall Lewis and his folks, they've been busy. It was, it was face mask against App State. Or excuse me, a hold, I'm sorry. Holding offense, number 75, 10-yard penalty, repeat first down. Damian Daly. <laughs> they were, they were kind of smiling about it there, too. Yeah. The officials are talking with, with Daly. <laughs> it's like, hey, man, come on. <laughs> oh, yeah, he's holding two guys. <laughs> yeah. Double the... Double the pleasure, huh? Columbia, South Carolina, 6'4", 295. He's probably, like me, excited about Thanksgiving this week, too. Yeah. Played at Georgia Military before coming to App State. Bryce, he's looking downfield. He's got a man, and it is incomplete. There is a flag. He was looking for Christian Horn again. He's also from Columbia, South Carolina. That was Slocum on the coverage. Yeah, going to catch Slocum on pass interference there, too. Keep it. Defense, defense, number four, 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. Slocum out of Lake Butler, Florida. And I think Christian Horn almost made that catch despite being tackled by Slocum. He's going to make one of those catches using the back of Slocum. I think App State is looking for one more score, six points, which could really be considered the dagger in this game. And then they'll really look to burn the clock in the fourth quarter. Because right now, with it sitting at 24 points, you've seen teams come back from that. Oh, yeah. That's three score game. So. O'Shea Fletcher made that stop on Harrington. There is a flag. Looks like a chop block is it called yes. there. Let's see who it's on. In the block for the race. Offense number 87. 15 yard penalty. We'll be second down. That's on Eli Wilson who had the touchdown reception earlier. Yeah, and Eli has done a nice job really laying some blocks down for this offense today. And he flattened the guy earlier in the game that was coming in. Oh, yeah. Uh, one of Troy's linebackers. I couldn't recall exactly who that was trying to get into the backfield, but Eli was having none of that. That Troy defense needs to try to create a turnover. They came in ranked 11th nationally in turnovers. They had two picks in the first half. That's where I thought the difference in this game would be today. And when Troy was somewhat in control, they were winning the turnover battle. That has gotten away from them, and so has the scoreboard. Bryce wide open on that far side. That catch by Christian Wells. And 15 more coming right after that. Yep, Slocum. So that's back-to-back 15-yard -back penalties on Slocum. The pass interference. Give him a late shove down there, out of bounds. Go for the play is the first down. After the play, first the foul, unnecessary roughness, defense number four. That's the distance to the goal line. First down. First and 22, no problem for Chase Bryce. And then, as you mentioned, yes, Slocum with the personal file afterwards. 
Yeah, it was late. Unnecessary. And he's going to get to come talk about it on the sidelines as well. So App State in the red zone again. The clock is running now, though, at least. <laughs> so, this drive it feels like it's taken forever. Well, we had a lot of penalties. <laughs> yeah. Inside the 10, near that, the 7, that's that only, was Harrington. That's only the sixth play of the drive, too. Yes. It's because all the 15 yards one side, then 10 yards back, and then it was Another kind of 15, a tennis match. Yeah, yeah. a little bit. Yeah. Back and forth. Approaching one minute left here in the third quarter. It's second and five. App State can get a first down at the two-yard line. And it has been a huge mm. third quarter for this App State team. 21 points, knocking on the door for 28. It's hard to win ball games giving up that many points in one quarter alone. Harrington to the four. It'll be third down and two. That Troy defense still a lot of fight in there for the Trojans. Medina, Lewis Medina in on that tackle. And that might be the last play of the third quarter. Yeah, looks like Chase Bryce is going to come over and talk to his coaches. And what a third quarter it was. As you mentioned, Ben, three touchdowns by App State in the quarter, and the Mountaineers have stretched this one out 31 to 7. Just 15 minutes away from clinching a spot in the Sunbelt Championship game for the App State Mountaineers. Time to start the fourth quarter on senior day here at Troy. Trojans led it 7-3 late in the first half, but since then it's been all Mountaineers. And right now, App State is knocking on the door again. Third down, two yards to go from the four-yard line. I formation, Bryce is under center. Hennigan is in motion. The toss to Harrington. And Harrington will get the first down. He's shy of the goal line, but a first down and another third down conversion for App State. That puts them at 5 of 10 on the night. 50% on third down. That's a viable number. Harrington. Oh, he didn't now. get it. He was short. Oh. Oh, wow. I saw the mark at first. I mean, by the shortest of margins, I too. Mean, we're talking about inches, folks. Maybe singular inch. I saw the mark by that line judge at the one. But here we go. Fourth and inches. It's Harrington spinning his way into the end zone and a touchdown. That was Daytrick. Harrington with his first touchdown of the season. And to talk about just how dominant this third quarter was for App State and now rolling into the fourth quarter. And I give people props where they're due. I'm scouring Twitter, looking at different stats. A fellow named Tommy says Troy had 10 yards in the third quarter. App State had 21 points. Mm. That's, <laughs> that makes it that much more of a stretch of just how huge the gap was in that third quarter. That was the stat that got by me. Troy just 10 yards in the third quarter. Baton makes it 38 to 7. App State celebrating is underway on that far side. The Mountaineers are on their way to the Sunbelt Conference Championship game two weeks from today. Another look at that touchdown by Harrington to cap off that 58-yard drive. It took nine plays. Harrington's first touchdown of the year. And how about that run? We're in basketball season already, Ben, so runs are all about hoops. But uh, 35 unanswered points 
for App State. Yeah, it's been an impressive show by the Mountaineers. Down the stretch. I mean, you talk 3,500 answer points. It was seven to three. I mean, late. late App State in had, the first uh, yes, yeah. Troy had the football under two minutes left. App State made a big couple big plays defensively, forced the punt, and then scored that touchdown with just seconds left in that first half, and it's been all Mountaineers since then. Troy in that third quarter, 10 plays. They picked up 10 yards. And this one in and out of the hands. Intended for Jabri Barber. Yeah, that one just popped right out. That was a, a great throw, and he was he was open. Second down and ten. This time, Brown is in motion. He'll stop in the slot. B.J. Smith hit behind the line of scrimmage. That's Tyler Bird. Came in with two tackles for a loss on the season. He just picked up one right there. Four-yard yeah. ball, Ryan. He jumped in there, too, man, from Ackworth, Georgia. Just <laughs> powered through that line. That's like me going for turkey on Thursday, man. That will be you. Get Parker. out of my way. Yeah. I'm coming. <laughs> that was that was quite a play there. Watson rolling to his right. Uh, completion to Tez Johnson. And I mean wife, children, everybody. I'm pushing everybody. Stiff arms abound. <laughs> so I'm, I'm Jalen kidding. McLeod. What, I think of that uh, Seinfeld episode with Costanza, George Costanza wiping out everybody on that fire. <laughs> that's you. That's that's you on Turkey Day, huh? <laughs> Knocking down kids. I get aggressive, okay? Yeah. All right. All right. I, I, I'm with you. I'm all. I'm, I'm passionate about the groceries too. And talking about Tez Johnson there uh, with that reception, uh, very close with the Nix family. Bo Nix, quarterback at Auburn, uh, lived with them for a while, and uh, great, uh, great family connection there. Uh, Dad, Patrick Nix, last night clinched a spot in the state championship, Central Phoenix City High School. They knocked off Auburn High School last night. So cool, cool weekend so far for, for his family unit. Fourth down, the Trojans came up shy as Jalen McLeod with the stop. And App State will have it first down and 10 at the 32-yard line of Florida. down 38 to 7 but Austin Stidham had a big game a couple big day I should say a couple weeks ago. I guess it's a game if you're playing football all the time but he got married congratulations to now the Stidhams they're in Russellville Alabama how about that yeah nicely done Mr. Stidham congratulations Mrs. Stidham as well yes that's fun So App State now going to just run the clock. It looks like we got a new quarterback in there as well. Chase Bryce's day is done. Uh, Jacob Huseman is in there, the 6'3", 205-pound senior from Bradenton, Florida. Seven for nine on the year, throwing the ball, 75 yards, a touchdown. So let's close the book on Bryce, 17 of 24, 212, three touchdowns, two interceptions. 71% completion percentage on the day. Came in second in the Sun Belt Conference, 245 yards passing per game. Had 212 today. Had pretty good balance. Yeah, no, really nice. 212 nice through the done. air, 192 on the ground. That's that balance that the coaches are always looking for. Troy, meanwhile, at 141 total. Jordan Anthony makes the stop. Now, here's a glaring number for you. Third quarter. If you were writing a print version of this for, say, uh, a newspaper. Okay. 10.57. That's a time of possession App State had the ball in the third quarter of this game. Yes. That is a very long time. And that included the one time that they got the ball at the 10-yard line, only a couple plays. Oh, yeah. After so that interception by Roof. That's really... 
I mean, the third quarter, third quarter dominance. He had a touchdown right at the end of the second quarter and then just absolutely blew this thing open in the third quarter. Anderson Castle with back-to-back -back carries for App State. He's from the home, he's a hometown boy right from Boone, North Carolina. Hometown guy getting a chance to run the ball. He has 27 carries on the year, 126 yards and a couple touchdowns. Out of Watauga High School. That was T.J. Harris with another tackle. Fourth down and two. And App State will go for it. And we got to make the trip to Boone. Maybe we can pick up an yes. App State game next year. Yeah, that's that would be great. Do a broadcast up there. And the leaves changing. And Anderson Castle. He's going to be close. It all depends. Is that going to be a left foot or a right foot mark? And Buddha Jones made the stop, but Anderson Castle's got himself a first down. He's got three carries. He actually had three carries last week for six yards. Has he got a chance to play there at the end of that uh, win over South Alabama, 31 to seven? Look at him fighting. Yeah, he's got, he's got two touchdowns on the year. Potentially trying to drum up a third here. Boy, they're letting the clock run though. Trying to burn as much as possible. Under 10 minutes left. And Anderson Castle with his fourth straight carry. Lewis Medina on that tackle. Medina out of Somerville, Georgia. Now over 20 tackles on the year. So next week, both of these teams, really I guess the less meaningful game would be App State's with Georgia Southern, although you don't want to lose that game. You don't ever want to kind of downplay it, no. even though they clinched the division tonight. Troy goes to Georgia State on the road in Atlanta, and that's a team that is hot right now, <laughs> Georgia State. Yeah, they hurt Coastal Carolina's feelings last week. Yeah, really, Coastal. Really knocked them out of contention here. Yeah, that changed the whole complexion. Remember, Last week we had the Louisiana Troy game and by Coastal losing to Georgia State, that opened up the door for Louisiana to host the conference championship game in two weeks. Yeah, it did. App State had the uh, tiebreaker going there uh, with Coastal with a couple to play. Uh, and then uh, that loss last week, like you mentioned, giving Coastal two losses in the league, not only put App State in the driver's seat in the division, but it also put Louisiana in the driver's seat to host. Jameer Smith, the transfer from Notre Dame is behind Huseman and he gets the carry here and he spins inside the 15 down near the 13 yard line. That's Carlton Marshall. Another tackle, Marshall, four different watch lists. He's a semi-finalist for the Burlesworth Trophy, that's the nation's top player that began as a walk-on. He'd have my vote. Yeah, I would say so too. I mean, what a career this guy's had so far. And still with time to go too. Just been an absolute playmaker. I think he's gonna be a deal for somebody in the NFL too. Got unbelievable work ethic. Just makes plays, I know. It, He's undersized at 5'9", 210, but boy, his motor doesn't stop. Fourth and a yard. That's and App State again converts on fourth down. 64% coming in, and they've got uh, several fourth down conversions today. If you look through the record books here at Troy, guys that are just a hair smaller, shorter, uh, maybe weight-wise, under what some of the kids are that, that get an SEC offer, per se. Right. Uh, it was a kid that played here. Well, not he's not a kid. He's a grown man. Jarrell Jernigan comes to mind, was a guy that was just a hair undersized here. Comes here, plays wide receiver. I mean, just blows out the record books. That's Jameer Smith again. Down inside the five to the three-yard line. And so Carlton Marshall, in my opinion, would be 
the Jarrell Jernigan of defense in the Floyd record books. I mean, just a playmaker. Jarrell won a Super Bowl ring with the New York Giants, That's too. right. Marshall currently number one in the country among all active players. That includes quite a few. Tackles per game, nine and a half. He'll break that Sun Belt Conference record early on next year. He'll have to have a monster. He'll have to have like a 26 or 27 tackle game next week at Georgia State to break it this year. Unless they can go bowling. And down near the goal line is Huseman. Jacob Huseman, he'll get the first down, I think. But he is not in the end zone. At the one now. That does uh, keep the ever merciful clock rolling. <laughs> As we go down the stretch here. Five and a half minutes left. Before App State officially clinches. We're talking about Carlton Marshall. He graduated from McGill Tulin High School in the Mobile area. Their playoff run came to an end last night. To a Huey Town in the state of Alabama. Troy's defense still playing hard, but getting into the end zone barely is Jameer Smith. Jameer Smith with his first touchdown as a Mountaineer. Look at the, the teammates, that whole running back room, giving him a lot of love. That's good vibe there, too, getting that touchdown. Good extra effort by Smith. Thought at first Marshall and his guys had made the stop near the goal line. Here's Staten. Start of the day, 42 of 42 in extra points. And he continues to stay perfect. App State, five minutes and six seconds away from officially winning the Sun Belt Conference Eastern Division. We are back at the vet here in Troy, Alabama. Last home game of the season for Chip Lindsay and the Troy Trojans. App State leads it 45 to 7 now. App State is uh, team that won the Sun Belt in 2016, 17, 18, and 19. Coastal Carolina snapped that last year. But App State is primed to get one back again this year. Louisiana, obviously, in two weeks will have some other ideas. And that kickoff will be a touchback. And we got to catch up on our breaks. We're going to take one more commercial break. We'll come back. It's Troy football when we return. Back here in Troy, our favorite Thanksgiving dishes. This is the crew selections, of course. Give you a chance to really digest, if you will. Yeah, we do this every selections. year. Yeah. Yes. Of course, yeah. gravy, lots of it. That was my selection. I like gravy on everything, man. I'll back that up. He talks a lot about gravy. There's no <laughs> question about that. <laughs> What a flattering uh, yes. uh, character trait. Yeah, there. you know, we worked yeah. together now three years yeah, in a row. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you get to know what you like. You met that like. guy, Ben Stanfield? Yeah. He loves gravy. Yeah, yes. <laughs> There's a flag on the field. That was Tool there. That uh, In at quarterback, in Kyle Tool. Yeah, yep. so he jumps into the game. Uh, Leesburg, Georgia, the freshman from Lee County Offense. High School. Offense, number 53. And, and, and so uh, first at down. this point in the season where you don't get any redshirt redshirt points against you too. So good to see Tool get a couple of snaps here to finish things out. Now what I like, well, look at Thomas. Honey glazed ham. Yep, Coach, he just comes into the booth right on cue on that. But I like the fact that DJ Jeremiah, our director today, and myself, all about some chicken and dressing. Yeah. I love my wife's chicken and dressing, so that's always, that's always got to be a staple. I don't know that I've ever had chicken and dressing oh. on Thanksgiving. <laughs> yes. We don't have turkey at the Colmeyer household. No? I, I married, I married into a family that uh, doesn't do turkey. No. So uh, well, they got fortunately well, we got 
the my biggest wife's chicken and dressing. Biggest turkey of all. Yeah. Will maybe, Colmar. Yeah. <laughs> oh boy, I walked right into that one. <laughs> I certainly did. <laughs> Under five minutes left, and the viewers are saying, please. please. Somebody make it stop. Yes. All right, there's one more I want to point out on here when we get the okay. chance to. Yes. Uh, so for those of you watching at home, keeping score at home, we're going to go to the fourth bullet point on the on the local graphic there when it comes back up. So tools in the pistol now. And kind of a bunch set. I think you got a false start there, yep. too. That's uh, Derek Graham, the backup right Offense, tackle. number 77, five-yard penalty, remain second down. He got, looks like you got Chase Little on the field. Is Cannon Biggs out there as well? All right, here's that, uh, what you're talking about, Jackson Calvin. Bang, bang, yeah. Brussels sprouts. You know, he's our replay. He's our replay guy in the, uh, in the truck. You know, what got all in this the control started? room, whatever three, you want to call it. Three years ago, Spradlin there below him with cranberry sauce. <laughs> That's a, that was our original yeah. discussion about yes. this. <laughs> That's where it all started. And maybe this is the day that it in, all ends. In this very same <laughs> game, in a very similar situation. That's Jamontez Woods on the carry. There is an injured Mountaineer in the backfield. And that's one thing you don't want to see here late is a couple of injuries. Uh, that's the Sean McKnight, backup defensive end that's injured. Round this thing out. Uh, I wonder if there'll be a big party in Boone, North Carolina tonight. Well, they still got a little meat left on the bone. Sure. No pun intended with Thanksgiving but coming you gotta, up. But you got to – yeah, let's see what you did there. Okay. I like that. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Some dessert next week with Georgia Southern, that's right? That's right. There you go. And Although then they got the that, main event. That, uh, that's not going to be a, uh, the friendliest game, I don't no. think. No, it won't. That's a team. They made a coaching change middle of the year, really, really first third of the year. That's right. And uh, have, have slowly – Improved, mm -hmm. you know, and that's what you want to see. So, wow, look at that that's differential. It. Yeah, story of the game right there. Time of possession. And the third quarter, uh, Troy, did Troy have the ball? What two minutes in the third quarter? Yes. Yeah. Something like that. I know App State scored 21 points, and there is a sack. That was Logan Dublin, Dublin out of Clearwater, Florida. His first sack of the year. His third tackle for a loss. Yeah, inside linebacker, I mean, just untouched. Yeah, yeah there was nobody blocking him. Huge gap. Troy will punt the ball away. Troy's offensive line was without the starting left guard today, DeAndre Butler. Uh, Cannon Biggs substituted for him. Jake Andrews was a game-time decision. He ended up starting today, but he was not 100%. Yeah, Carson Burt came in and got some playing time a moment ago. Redshirt freshman from Fort Payne. Magliozzi. This will take a Troy bounce out of bounds. And the clock will stop with two minutes and 48 seconds remaining. All things considered, though, with some holes in the offensive line today, I thought the guys played a, a remarkable first half. Yes. Uh, the second half didn't quite go their way. Oh, but, no. But well, to, App to State knew what in. the play was going to be. Yeah. When App State got that big lead, they knew that the running game was over with. Yeah, it was over. That's right. And Troy with, what, 33 rushing yards on the day. Yeah. Last 109 up top, 33 on the ground. Last week, 27, I think, was the rushing total last week, if I'm not mistaken. That does sound right. So App State's offense will try to finish the deal here. Try to run out the final 248. Try to burn this thing out and get moving to the airport. And Anderson Castle will get another carry. He's getting a lot of work here in the fourth quarter. Carlton Marshall again on the tackle. App State last year won the Myrtle Beach Bowl. Before that, the previous two years, they won the New Orleans Bowl championship. That was in 18 and 19. 
the Dollar General Bowl in 2017, and then they won the Camellia Bowl in 2015 and 16. So that's what, six in a row, right? Six, that, yeah. And they've only been, I think this is their seventh year in the FBS, yeah. if, my, <laughs> if I'm correct on that. Nobody's had a more impressive start than them at the FBS level. Anderson Castle picks up two more. Things are getting a little chippy now, out there on the near side. Across the league, bowl eligible teams. You got Georgia State sitting there at five and five coming into today. The they were leading Arkansas State, so they may they may jockey for a spot. App State, of course, about to move to nine and two. You got Troy at five and six mm -hmm. in just a minute and a half here at Georgia State next week. So Georgia State could get it today. Troy could get it next week at Georgia State. Coastal's in. Louisiana's in. ULM still has a shot. They would need to complete the Louisiana sweep at LSU tonight and then at Louisiana next Saturday. Kind of a tall mountain to climb. Let's go ahead and say mm, probably not, not for the Warhawks. There's the first down. South Alabama can get bowl eligibility. They're 5-5 five and five right now. Uh, but they would have to do it either tonight in Neyland Stadium against Tennessee or next Saturday, Coastal Carolina. Kind of another very tall order. So potentially you could have one, two, three, four, five, six, maybe seven teams from the league. How about that? That could go bowling this year. That was Anderson Castle with that first down run, and now it's the old victory formation for Jacob Huseman. And the celebrating is on for the Mountaineers as they have won the Sun Belt Eastern Division crown with a convincing 45-7 win today. What stood out? Well, the game plan that App State had, really. I mean, they overcame turnovers early and blew this thing out in the second half. Time of possession. Troy held it just 10 yards in the third quarter. But what an unbelievable outing today for App State. This has really become their second home on the road. They play so well here. Congratulations, remarkable team. And uh, just a run that all of their fans should cherish and be ultra proud of. And with that, we will put a bow here from the vets so far. Ben Stanfield, I'm Will Colmar, along with the rest of our outstanding crew saying so long from Troy. The final score one more time, App State 45, Troy 7. All games airing on the ESPN Networks are streaming live and archived on the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN. Thanks for joining us, and enjoy the rest of your weekend, everybody, and happy Thanksgiving.